last week we seen that there was a clear uh, African, uh, Roman African presence in Britain in the uh, third century and also um, which leads us to believe that there was a Christian presence very much early on in Britain, um, long before uh, Christianity became the uh, official uh, religion of, of the state. And so this week we're, we're going to be going across um, the pond, um, if you will, um, back over to the continent of Africa. And we're going to be looking at um, uh, an interesting um, person today called King Izana. And for those who may not know who King Azana is, King Azana was a uh, king and ruler and emperor of the Aksum Empire, which what we would call um, present day Ethiopia. Although during his reign, um, his kingdom made up parts of Eritrea, uh, northern Ethiopia, um, some would suggest Djibouti, as well as parts of Sudan. Or we know that the Aksum Empire expanded um, to take over those regions and, and as well as reached as, as far as, far as, as um, Yemen. So we're going to be looking at King Azana, who he was and the role he played within uh, Christianity. And so King Azana is believed to have um, decreed that Christianity was the state and the official um, religion for his kingdom, the Aksum Empire which is, as I said, what people would now call present-day Ethiopia. Um, I think it's also important to mention when we talk about early presence in, um, early Christian presence in Africa, um, and I know some people will refer to um, the Ethiopian eunuch in, in the Book of Acts, which is what we'll, we'll look on next week. But just to give you um, just kind of a side note, anytime we see the word Ethiopia, um, in, in the Bible, whether that's um, the, especially in the Old Testament and New Testament, it doesn't always refer to what we would call present day Ethiopia, the country or the region. It was a word used to um, suggest someone of black origin or black skin. Um, another word that was used in parallel, synonymous to that was Kush, Kushai. So when we see the word Ethiopian, it doesn't mean what we think it means today, which is the region or country of Ethiopia, rather, it refers to a, a group of people with darkened black skin and so King Azana has is the king who decrees that um, Christianity becomes um, the official state religion now. Well, what's interesting and this happened in the fourth century so we've got dates around between 330 um, common era to 340 common era where that happens. Well, what's interesting is that Izana is a young um, young 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 boy when he becomes king um his his father has these two slaves who have been captured um possibly coming back from we believe india um along one of those trading trade routes and so these two um men possibly from lebanon so frumentius and assidius are two young christian men who are taken captive within the um, Aksum court by Izana's father and we believe that over time um, they become established within the court and um, Frumentius especially he becomes kind of Izana's steward or his mentor and he kind of teaches him and um, we believe that he, he, he kind of um, mentors him um, as, he, as he's growing into within his kingship and it's believed that Azana converts to Christianity but we need to remember that Christianity wasn't a foreign concept um, it would have been very much known along with Judaism Christianity and Judaism would have been the money theistic religions um, as well as the other polytheistic and um, pagan religions and so it's important to remember that this is not some kind of missionary trip that they went on to try and convert the people of that land. Um, Aksum was a prominent empire um, that had links to, to other parts in Europe, namely the Roman Empire and further beyond east to places such as um, India and China. So it was a key kingdom in regards to trading routes and, and we see um, in history the, the empire actually expands um, beyond Izana. Um, during his reign and 
um, succeeding kings um, expand the empire. And so when we look at the conversion of Izana and the conversion of Christianity to the country, it's not a case of um, it was a missionary trip, so to speak. It was a case of um, Christians would have been well, would have been known in and around those regions, um, would have been practicing Christianity by this time during the fourth century, was more organized, more established, had, had various bishops in, in different prominent cities across um, the Roman Empire and beyond. And so it's key to, to recognize that this is, wasn't a mission trip to try and convert um, peoples of the Axum Empire. It, it came about through natural, we believe, kind of a, a natural recognition and relationship between, um, in this case, Azana and um, Frumentius, who, who was his, his, his mentor at that time. And so Izana um, establishes that Axum will, Christianity will be Axum's um, official um, state religion. And with that, he does some interesting things because Axum is one of the few, one of only few kingdoms to mint um, their own coins, which means they, they create their own coinage system. And so we see a clear um, distinction in the coins and the inscriptions during, especially during Azana's reign, where on the coins there would have been a crest or a crescent that is now being replaced with a cross. And so it goes to show not only um, the influence that um, Ethiopia or Axum would have had in regards to um, imagery um, and inscriptions being used in coinage from a Christian perspective, but also the wealth of that empire as well. Um, very few empires were making their own coins, especially gold and silver coins. And so it's believed that within the, the empire, silver coins would have been traded in and amongst um, those people groups. But gold coins especially would have been traded with um, those from the Roma Greco world, um, those as from, from, from India, um, and even as far as China. Um, it's been reported that coins from Azana's reign has been um, dated and found in India and also some scholars believe um, that it, they've also been found as far as China as well. So we can see that this this um, network or this 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 reach of um, the Aksum Empire was far reaching um, than, than what we would have originally thought um, based on the, the research and scholarship that's gone into this. And so it's important to, to note that not only would trade and coin and commerce and economics being traded, but also ideas, um, beliefs and ideology and politics also would have been traded along that. And so it, it, we could assume and be safe to assume that Christianity would have, and we know that it spread um, to India and to, to China much earlier than what we would have originally thought. And so it's fascinating to see also how uh, the Axum Empire had changed in regards to we, we see these great um, monuments, these, these stones, these obliques that have been erected um, before Azana's reign and we believe the last, um, this, this tall monument stone was erected um, at Azana's burial and that was the last one we believe that has been erected since then um, and because the way in how the, the, the Empire would have dealt with burials, would have moved away from those pagan um, or those polytheistic traditions and would have been more in line to monotheistic and definitely to to Christian traditions as well. And so it's fascinating that we can see the development of how Axum has um, developed and grown, um, not just within the, 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 the influence of the Empire, but also within Christianity as well. And so it's fascinating for us to see that how um, this empire has, has had such um, an impact upon um, Christianity, on, on the African soul, and even, we can assume, farther reaching as well. And so, as, as always, I, I invite you to continue to do some more research at, in regards to King Azana, um, in regards to the Axum Empire and the surrounding um, nations and regions as well, and the territories and how it expanded um, over time as well. So um, tune in next week where we're hopefully we'll be looking at um, um, some, some figures in regards to uh, the Bible, uh, more specifically the New Testament in regards to black history. So I hope you've, you've, you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative and I'll see you next week. So thank you and take care.